Well, hello and happy St. Patrick's Day. And here we are in the news. Um, welcome as we continue our Multiply Ministry Month. We want to start with sharing a very fitting story for today. That's right. We're, we're very on theme. So Abby wished you guys a happy St. Patrick's Day. And this morning we were kind of doing some digging on what Patrick's story was right. and kind of how it connects to Christian leaders. So St. Patrick was born in Britain under the rule of the Roman Empire, but when he was 16, he was captured by Irish pirates and forced into slavery as a herdsman in Ireland. So can yeah. you imagine being 16 and kind of ripped away from your family, everything you know, country? And this was this was a life of isolation, right? He was right. just being a herdsman. Yep, and exactly. there was lots of suffering, illness, you know, being alone. Um, but despite this, Patrick spent much of his time praying. And although he was not really a Christian, he kind of knew about Christianity a bit. Um, but as he spent this time kind of connecting with God and exploring that relationship, he had a dream um, that he would return back to his homeland. Then um, down the line, he had another dream where he actually saw a ship waiting for him. And this all came to fruition. Um, by the time he was 22, he escaped back to Britain and was reunited with his family and began to study as a priest. And what was interesting is along this journey, he ministered to a lot of the people who he was on the ship with. They yeah. ran out of food and they came to him wow. saying, God, like, can you ask God yeah. to provide food from, for us? And that came true. They ran into like a herd of animals. So lots of like interesting signs mm -hmm. along that journey. Um, so, you know, he was back in Britain, he was all happy right. and his family was, you know, thrilled to have him back, of course. Um, but he, so he, you know, he was studying Christianity, learning more about that. And then he had another dream um, where he felt called to return wow. to Ireland. And his parents were, as you can imagine, not super happy. Right. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. You yeah. just escaped there and you're going to go march right back there right. into that same situation. And you know, what if you're captured again? What if you're yeah. enslaved again? And, and, you know, I just love that because I feel like that is the boldness that we see on a regular basis in many of your stories. Right. What has been the very thing that has hurt you the most or you struggled with the most is the very thing that you say, Lord, I'm going to go back to minister to the people that are still needing to be redeemed from mm -hmm. that or being struggling with that. You know, we see that a lot, especially in, in addiction or loss of the family or something like that. And so, yes, it, yeah, yeah and, and it, it's, it is just such a testimony to the Holy Spirit within you. And that's what was happening with St. Patrick. Absolutely. And as he returned, he, he faced severe opposition. The political landscape in Ireland was not, not welcoming. He had attempted poisonings and ambushes, all these just crazy things that I, I can't even imagine. Right. Yeah. But he wrote about this time um, in one of his books. As every day arrives, I expected either sudden death or deception or being taken back as a slave or some other misfortune. But I fear none of these since I look to the promise of heaven and have flung myself into the hands of the all-powerful God who rules as Lord everywhere. I love that. And again, just such a testimony of when you have that complete and utter faith in the Lord. Um, yeah, no matter what's thrown at you, you are okay because we are in God's hands and we know where our eternity lies. That's right. So, um, you know, we celebrate St. Patrick's Day today because this is the day he was said to have passed away. But really, I think it's great to celebrate. You know, he planted over 300 churches in Ireland and baptized tens of thousands of people. Some estimate over 100,000, which is wild. Um, but he really is credited with you know, spreading Christianity in Ireland, which obviously spread beyond, you know, a true multiplier. Right. And as you guys know, that's what this month is about. It's being a multiplier and that's a multiplier, planting 300 churches, <laughs> baptizing thousands. Um, what a blessing and what a multiplication of the gospel. And so you're a multiplier of the gospel too. And we have seen so many of you that are making that difference in your own personal life with your family, your friends, your community. We talk about the seven connections a lot. And so we want to hear, we want to hear those stories. We want to be able to share more about mm -hmm. that. And we took the news survey and that's something that we see you guys want as well. And so um, one of the things is since we're in this month, if you email a photo and a multiplication story, maybe that story is as simple as 
ministering to someone who was really hurt and just multiplying the love of God in their life. Or, you know, maybe it is feeding the homeless and multiplying God's love that way, but whatever it is. Um, and if you don't have a photo, that's okay too. We want to hear the multiplication story, but we would love to also see, um, yeah, that kind of, if you have a photo or even a video, that would be awesome. But if you email that division partner at christianleaders.net, you'll be entered into a drawing at the end of the month. And to kind of uh, highlight some of the prizes there could be, we're going to have a sponsored degree, some store credit. Um, you know, Abby, I put this one in here, some coaching practice. All ones. right. Yeah. <laughs> I <laughs> got it. <laughs> no, that's a great prize. I'm excited to see who wins. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so we're, we're excited about, and there'll be more, but I just wanted to, again, kind of get you guys excited about some of that because most of all, we want to hear your stories of multiplication. Absolutely. And I see uh, President Henry just hopped on. So hello to him. And it's cool because yesterday we got a little sneak peek of some work that he's doing to highlight a multiplier um, in Florida, um, Prince who you know shared CLI and that uh, opportunity with some ministers that she's in contact with Great. there. So yeah, just really Great. the multiplication in her life multiplied out to four other ministers raised up. And again, we won't we won't spoil that whole right. story because that's <laughs> in the come. work. But um, I see a couple of comments. First, President Henry saying we're both in green. Yes, it is St. Patrick's <laughs> Day. And someone else said love matching shirts, which I'd like to say was completely unplanned. unplanned. So That's we right. do feel good about that. Yeah. <laughs> Great minds think alike. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. So kind of continuing on other ways you can participate. We just talked about the multiplication story, but mm -hmm. also every dollar given this month will be matched to pool with us as a student. And we are very excited because so many of our students have already been matched by your generosity mm -hmm. and of students that are paying off the degree program. And so again, reminder, we've got that drawing at the end of the month on the 31st. Yes. Also, highlighting again, we've got this degree sale, 25% off. I've seen many of you taking um, advantage of this opportunity, which is awesome because that's that's huge. Sometimes that can be a barrier for some of you in graduation. So if you're looking for a payoff link, please email amerkel at christianleaders.net. Or even if you just want to make a one-time payment towards your degree and get this extra percentage off. So however you can participate, again, remember that will be matched for a student. All right, other ways you can get enrolled. Tell them, Abby. I mean, we just talked about donating yep, in the degree. That's right. So these are the other ways you can get um, entered into these drawings and win some of the said prizes earlier. Um, so any donation this month, whether it's a one-time gift, um, you know, a recurring gift, anything, uh, you'll be counted um, using that coupon, as Abby mentioned, um, referring a student to Christian leaders this month, which, you know, that's part of the multiplier effect. Getting the word out on our behalf is, is so welcomed. And you can just shoot us an email um, saying the name of that person so we can confirm their account and you'll be entered into a drawing. Buying a book from our Christian Leaders store, a great opportunity. And then, like we mentioned at the start, emailing a photo and a story or just the story of multiplication to vision partner at christianleaders.net. And we're excited because that, of course, blesses us. But then we love sharing that with other students um, just, you know, as an effect of multiplication and inspiring others. Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, we are gonna finish up this mini course. And again, uh, we're, we've are we been excited about diving into this topic. And so mm -hmm. we're just gonna kind of, yeah, tie it all together, everything we've learned and kind of consider, yeah, moving forward as we're using our spiritual gifts. Yeah, that's right. So these are kind of the topics on the screen there that we've gone over, you know, starting at the beginning from what are spiritual gifts? What does that definition look like? From what does the Bible say about it? Then we went into the gifts assessment, discerning your own spiritual gifts you know, acknowledging others, challenges and roadblocks. And then um, the last session was applying spiritual gifts to the seven connections. And I feel like that's a really great launching point to kind of summarize, you know, what does this mean overall? How can we continue this conversation? How can you keep, you know, what you've learned at the forefront um, of your mind? So I think it'd be great if we could be interacting in the comments. I think this is just yeah, a great discussion to be had. Takeaways, you know, for those of you that are tuned in, even if you've only seen all week of it, or maybe just you haven't seen any of it, but you want to speak in a spiritual guest, you know, we want to hear you guys' thoughts on that topic now, and especially what we have talked about. But I will ask you, Abby, yeah. as you're stepping away from the, like us digging into this course mm -hmm. and kind of exploring more into this topic, what is some of the things that are sticking out to you as your own takeaways? Yeah, I think one of my major takeaways was that in order to kind of embark on this journey, like your relationship, A, needs to just be really strong with God. And I think that's one of the pitfalls that was like really recurring in the challenges and roadblocks where it's like if you have that mm -hmm. spiritual immaturity or 
whatever it may be that's like a you know a stumbling block in this process like that kind of needs to be ironed out first before you can really have clarity and have that clear line of communication um, with God because I know for me like I have always kind of thought about what my spiritual gifts may be but the process of discernment has been like difficult and applying that then has been difficult where it's like I was skipping steps almost so kind of getting back to basics was really powerful for me what about for you no I, I love that um, I think that there's been a few things where I think it's just really motivating to kind of step back and go, man, I know that the spirit has blessed me with so many gifts and also with other ones, not so much, but it's like, I don't, sometimes I don't really feel I am plugging them into my community or plugging them outside mm-hmm. of like here at work or just with my family. And so I feel like I definitely been thinking about that a lot about, you know, where are some areas where maybe God is wanting me to, or maybe even again, who can I empower to use their spiritual gifts? So just kind of yeah, thinking about some of those things yeah, um, really for powerful. sure. I think that connects with one other thing that stuck out to me a lot is that, you know, to non-Christians or people who we just come into contact with regularly or even not regularly, like spiritual gifts are part of our witness. And like, it's important that we're able to represent that in a gospel aligned manner, um, but also that it can be such a powerful tool to, you know, allow others to see that gospel message alive in us. So yeah, although the Bible doesn't say a whole lot about spiritual gifts or it's kind of like a tough topic to discern, I mean, that's really at the core of it too and why it is so important to reflect on this. Yeah. And I think also kind of tying into everything that we have been talking about, it's like when you are using your gifts, you are going to be more of a multiplier of of the gospel, of God's love, of all of those things. And so as you continue thinking about spiritual gifts and maybe how that relates in your personal walk and your calling, we do want to recommend a few of our courses here at Christian Leaders to keep engaging you and taking you further on considering your spiritual gifts. So ministry calling and confidence, you know, feeling confident in your call and being able to use those spiritual gifts and those call in that calling, I think is really important. So that's recommendation number one, if you haven't taken that course with us. Definitely. And then a few mini courses um, that we story of a gospel heritage, it's a relatively new um, mini course, but that dives a lot into like personal identity and then how that kind of connects with the greater community. So I don't think it touches on spiritual gifts exactly, but I think it's a great kind of space to think about yeah. where you can use your spiritual gifts and how it relates to, you know, the kingdom as a whole. Christian discernment skills. I mean, we talked a lot about, you know, personal discernment um, and that journey of deciding what you feel called your spiritual gifts are. So that's definitely important, an important skill that can be applied well beyond spiritual gifts. Um, multiplying disciples, influence smart. I mean, the power of, you know, even if you're not talking about your spiritual gifts directly, the influence that using those has on other people is really important to consider. People smart, leadership, leadership theories. That's a really great one um, that dives into kind of some different types of leadership and while leadership was kind of one of the gifts we actually discussed that can come in a lot of different formats and you know here at christian leaders we obviously believe that everyone can be a leader whether that's you know in the role of a head pastor or a volunteer just in your family so really interesting to explore that there and then what others i mean who knows (laughs) it it, spiritual gifts connects back with a lot of biblical topics so even in the comments if you have maybe a recommendation of a course that has touched you recently or whatever that may be and I love the connections was just mentioned, which we talked a lot about the seven connections. There you so go. if you haven't <laughs> taken that course, that's also a great one to take as you think about the seven connections and how we even talked about that relating to your spiritual gifts. So if you want to dive deeper into that and haven't yet, absolutely. So I love that comment there. So. Yeah. And then one just kind of final verse, this has been shared several times throughout um, these sessions. Um, but 1 Corinthians 12, verse four through six says, there are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. So I just like that verse to kind of round out the conversation and end yeah. on that note. Yeah. Yep. 
Absolutely. I mean, once again, the spiritual gifts are something that are given to us when the Holy Spirit enters us. And what mm -hmm. a, again, what a powerful blessing that is. And all of that is given from the Lord, but it looks totally different in each of our lives as unique creations of Christ. And so, yeah, it, it, it was a, such a fun topic to dive into. I really enjoyed diving in with you, Abby. Great. And um, yeah, it's just been such a fun discussion. And we look forward to even seeing more of those forum, com uh, forum comments That's as right. we hear more about how the Lord is working in your life in spiritual discipline. So thank you guys. Amen. All right. So here we are at the joke of the day. And I already All like right. the theme we got okay. going on. Yeah. Oh yeah. You guys better believe it. Um, why shouldn't you iron a four leaved clover? Hmm. All right. I'm looking, I'm looking to see if anyone can get this joke. What about you, Abby? You have this? I don't know. I mean, something about Luck? I don't know. There is some little luck, right? Have you ever found a four-leafed clover in your life? I remember as a kid, like that was always so my mission. So my niece Phoebe has actually given me multiple. I oh. have literally, yeah, in this here we have oh, yeah. multiple four-leaf clovers there in the go. summers when we have the family lunch. So, oh, here we go. Jerry's got it. Because you don't want to press oh, your luck. Nice. Yeah, you like do it. not want to press your luck. You don't want to iron the four leaf clover. You might mess up your luck. <laughs> nice. Good job, Jerry. Good love it. All right. Closing encouragement. I love a good Irish prayer or some of the Irish blessings. Mm -hmm. And um, this one, some say, was maybe writ by uh, Roten. Uh, written. <laughs> okay, I, I lost that. Written by Saint Patrick himself, but all others think it's anonymous. So take that with a grain of salt. But I, I really love this. You know, I rise today through God's strength to pilot me, God's might to uphold me. God's wisdom to guide me, God's eyes to look before me, God's ears to hear me, God's word to speak for me, God's hand to guard me, God's way to lie before me, God's shield to protect me, God's host to save me from the snares of the devil, from temptations of vices, and from everyone who desires me ill and afar and anear. I There's a couple of phrases in that I just really love. You know, God's eyes to look before me, God's word to speak for me. You know, we we get to be his messenger. And, and again, God really does. He shows up and the Holy Spirit gives us the words to speak. And so, I, again, it's a beautiful, there's actually a lot more to this person. This is just a small um, excerpt. Oh, I love it. that. And it really does, whether it's written by St. Patrick or not, you know, it does totally connect to his story and just that relentless trust, despite the circumstances yes. yep. that God has laid out a path. And, you know, for him, it was a path of beautiful multiplication and the spread of Christianity. And I think, so, uh, you know, we can be inspired to take that same attitude and just trust in what the Lord has for us, that it will be something beautiful. Absolutely. Well, may God bless you and may you be a multiplier like St. Patrick.